This sermon is titled Believing Prayer Part 4 Be enriched as you listen We've been doing a series of messages on following Jesus in prayer See when you want to eat a full loaf you've got to cut it into slices and eat one slice at a time So each message in this series is one slice We'll finish the full loaf <laughs> Amen So Today is slice number four, <laughs> part four in this sermon series, right? We talk, we, what we're doing is we are looking at the life, the teaching, and the ministry of the Lord Jesus in the Gospels and zeroing it in on what did Jesus say and do concerning the subject of prayer. What did he do? What did he teach us? And then we want to emulate that. We want to follow his example. So we are following Jesus in prayer. Now, as, you will, as we will discover as we go f- further along in this sermon series, we will understand that there are actually different kinds of prayer. And the Bible teaches us that. There are different kinds of prayer. And if you want to illustrate it or imagine it, you can think about it like this. You have a ball. You can play many, di- many different games with the ball. With one ball, you can, play a, you can play basketball, you can play foot soccer, or you can play throw ball, or whatever. One ball. Many games. But how you play those games are all different. You don't want to apply football rules on the basketball court. That will be total chaos. It's the same game. It's a game with the ball. But the rules are different. And so this is only an illustration. Please don't go and say, Pastor said prayer is like playing games. <laughs> That's not what I said. Okay? I'm just illustrating that there are different ways to pray. And different ways that we engage with God. And there are different rules that govern prayer. And today we are going to talk about believing prayer. What we want to do is examine what did Jesus tell us or teach us about believing prayer? What did he demonstrate to us through his life and ministry about believing prayer? And then we get into what did he tell us explicitly that we must do to pray believing prayer? We're going to do that today. Talk about believing prayer. We're going to begin with some very familiar verses. We're all, we're all familiar with these statements, with statements that Jesus made, ask, seek, knock. We're all familiar with that. I, I remember back in, you know, in Sunday school days, we used, to sing, we used to sing those choruses, ask and keep on asking. I don't know if the kids sing those these, these days, but back in our school, Sunday school, we used to sing those songs. It's very familiar. But let's begin Matthew chapter 7. Verses 7 through 11, where Jesus speaks to us about ask, seek, and knock. Let's read, out, read them out loud together, please. Matthew 7, 7 to 11, let's read. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks it will be open. Or what man is there among you? If his son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask you? Now, Luke repeats this, and uh, we will make mention of it uh, a little later. But what I want to, want to bring to our attention in, in, this, in, the, in this passage that Jesus spoke, notice his, the way he makes these statements. They are absolutes. They are statements of full assurance. He says, ask and it shall be or it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, it will be opened to you. The, there, are, there is no element of doubt in these statements. He didn't say, 
ask and, you know, on Mondays it'll be given, but if you ask on Tuesdays, it won't be. Or if God's in a good mood, you'll get it. If God's upset or he's gone on vacation, none of those things. I'm exaggerating a little bit, but the point is, these are statements that are absolute. Ask and it will be given to you. Now, when you read books on prayer, they don't say the same thing. They will say, sometimes God says yes, sometimes God says no, sometimes God says maybe, sometimes he doesn't know. So you got to make a choice. Are you going to read those books that you read or are you going to read, believe the book? And in the book, Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. That's where I stand. He said it. So I'm going to believe that. I'm not going to change the text of the scripture just because somebody wants to explain something. No, don't do that. I, can't, I can discard a theologian's book, but I will not discard the words of Jesus. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. And notice that he said this is in the context of prayer because he, when he completes this passage, he says, how much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask? So the context is very clearly prayer. So this asking, seeking, and knocking is happening in the context of prayer. While you're engaging with the heavenly father, you are asking, you want something to receive, you are seeking, there's the questions or things that you want to understand there's knocking happening you want God to open doors for you make a way for you but this is happening in the context of prayer because that's what he ended up with the other thing I want to point out is that he said this applies to everybody for everyone who asks receives tell your neighbor you're in it right nobody's excluded you know some of us will say well John can ask, and Paul can ask, and Mary can ask, and Susan can ask, but me, not me. No, 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 you're included. Because everyone who asks, receives. This is for you. Everyone, you're included. You ask, you can receive, you knock, you seek, you will find, it's for you. So you're in it. You're not excluded. And in Matthew 7, the next point I want to bring our attention to, in Matthew 7, he's talking about good things. Good things. How much more will the Heavenly Father give good things? And this is where Luke bears something different. In Luke chapter 11, verses 11 to 13, you read what Luke wrote. In verse 13, Luke is talking about spiritual things. He says, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit? to those who ask him. So Luke is pointing to spiritual things. Matthew is talking about earthly things, things. So there's nothing wrong in asking for things, that things that you need here now in this earth. Nothing wrong. And the last one I want to bring our attention to is that Jesus places this whole thing on relationship. Just like we what we mentioned two Sundays ago. Our Father in heaven. Same thing. That when you are asking, seeking, and knocking from God, and you're engaging with God in prayer, it's based on relationship. God is your father. You are his son and daughter. And he draws a comparison. He says, on the earth, no earthly father, if a son comes and asks for bread, will he give him a stone? No earthly father would deal with their children in such manner. But your heavenly father is much more gracious, much more kind, much more loving. How much more will your heavenly father give good things to those who ask? So this this is what the Lord Jesus taught on prayer. It's very positive. No element of ifs, buts, and maybes. Those are not chapters in the Bible. Are you listening? Now some would say, well, but that's not our experience, you know. I asked for these 25 things and God gave me one out of 25 and all of this. Look, that's your experience. Let's talk about the word first. And then let's figure out how to get our experience up to the level of his word. Don't bring his word down to the level of your experience. 
challenge yourself and say, God, what must I do to bring my experience up to the level of your word so I can actually experience your word? I'm not going to change your word to bring it down and explain my experience. No. Yeah, so let's, let's do that. So now, how are we going to experience this? Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter 6. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. He taught us to trust in the Father's care. He said, see, your prayer is based on engaging with your heavenly Father. And when you engage with your heavenly Father, trust in the Father's care. You just position yourself and you trust in Him. Trust in His Father, Father's care. Just trust. I want to read just a few verses there in Matthew 6. Verse 31 to 34. He says, therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we... Are you all with me so far? Okay, let's read this together, please. Matthew 6, 31 to 34. Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Verse 32. For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. So in Matthew 6, Jesus is talking about earthly things. What you eat, what you wear, all those things that matter about life. And you can add to that mix your education, education, vocation, job, oh, where you're going to live, all, add, just add everything, everything that concerns, that has to do with life, just throw it all in. He only mentioned what you wear, eat, and drink, but throw everything in, all these things. He says, you know, your heavenly father knows you have need of these that means God cares about the things. Some people, they're so spiritual. I don't care. God doesn't care. Hey, God cares. Jesus said he cares. Your heavenly father knows you have need about all these. Your father cares. Your heavenly father cares about all these things of life. What you eat, what you wear. Uh, all these things. He cares about it. He's interested in it. Some people think if you want to be spiritual, don't even think about these things. That's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches stewardship in these things. That's a sign of your spirituality. That's a sign of your maturity. Not absconding. No. Taking responsibility. It's being a steward. That's another sermon. But the point is this. God is interested in the things. But then he taught us. He said, but I want you to posture yourself like this. When it comes to the things of the earth, don't be like the people of the world. But you posture yourself like this. Seek first the kingdom. And his righteousness. So your position is, I'm seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness. We'll explain what it means. And if you posture yourself like this, your heavenly father will make sure that all, everybody say all, all, that all these things will be added, not subtracted, divided, minus. No, all these things will be added to you. That's what he said. Some people say, I decided to follow Jesus and he took everything away. I don't know, but Jesus said, if you follow me, I will add these things to you. So somebody is wrong. Either you're wrong or Jesus is wrong. I believe Jesus. He said, if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, then all these things, all the things that matter for life, all these things will be added to you. You know, one day, Peter, the great apostle, was feeling bad for himself. You read about this in Mark chapter 10, verse 29 and 30. 
This is not in the sermon notes, just slight journey. He said, Lord, we have left everything and we followed you. We've left everything and we followed you. Lord, I just gave up everything, I'm following you. I have nothing. You, you've ruined me, God. You know what Jesus said? Oh, poor Peter, I've got a mansion for you in heaven. He didn't say that. He looked at Peter and said, Peter, there is no one who has left houses or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who will not receive a hundredfold. Everybody say a hundredfold. Who will not receive a hundredfold now in this life and life, eternal life in the, in the life to come. Now it's Peter, don't you dare tell me I ruined you. I'm telling you, anyone who follows me, I will give them 100 times as much in this life and much more in heaven. It's in the Bible, in case you haven't read it. In other words, we gotta change our thinking. I'll align your thinking to what Jesus spoke, what he actually said. He said, if you seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. They'll be brought in. That means your heavenly father cares for these things. But there are two prerequisites. This is how you posture yourself. First, he said, seek first the kingdom. That means our posture is, Lord, my only desire is for you. What does the kingdom mean? It means the king's rule and dominion, where the king reigns. I want you to rule. I want you to reign in me and through me. That's my only desire. The reason I want to do well professionally, the reason I want to increase in my job, the reason I want to be a good educator or a big good sportsman or a good architect or a good physician or the reason I want to make change in the government or reason I want to do whatever I want to do on the earth, this is number one reason. I want you to reign in me and through me. Seek first the kingdom. That's my motivation. And second, he said, and my righteousness. What is righteousness? Doing what is right in God's eyes. Yes, positionally we have been made righteous in the eyes of God through Jesus Christ, but now he's calling us to walk in righteousness. He says, you make this your priority to do what's right in the eyes of God. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. I am here to do what's right in God's eyes. Even if men laugh at me or people accuse me, whatever, my, I am set on doing what's right in, before God. And if that's our posture, he said, all these things will be added to you. Amen? So the point is this. In believing prayer, we must know that we can ask for the things of the earth, the things that we need in our lives, things that matter to us, and God, our Heavenly Father, will provide these things, but He's called us to position ourselves in this manner, where we seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. And if you're positioned that way, you can be sure that the things that you ask, it will be added to you. Are you listening? So what we're going to do now is look at Jesus. How did he demonstrate in his ministry and in his practice? How did he demonstrate believing prayer? And then we will conclude on how, how did he teach us to do that? Because he wants us to follow him, imitate him. You know, when we look at the ministry of Jesus, when people came and petitioned Jesus for things that they needed, here's how we see Jesus interacting with such people. I'm just looking at three examples. There are many you can see in the Gospels. There was a leper who came to Jesus and he said, Lord, if, it's, if you are willing. So now this leper had a big theological hurdle. If you are willing. I, I don't know if you are willing to give this to me or not. So a theological hurdle, a question about the will of God. If you are willing, you can make me clean. What was Jesus' response? Come back tomorrow, I'll, I'll tell you. No, that was not his response. His response was immediate. I am willing. You've come asking 
for your healing, for, you know, you're, you're a leper. He didn't say, it's the Father's will for you to live like this the rest of your life. He didn't give any of those kinds of things. He said, I am willing. Be clean. Think about Jairus. He's come to the Lord on behalf of his daughter. His daughter was sick, but now she's dead. And he gets news from home. Your daughter is dead. Don't trouble the master anymore. What did Jesus how did Jesus respond in that situation? He didn't say, Jairus, this is the Father's will. Just go with it. No. He said, Jairus, fear not. Only believe. In that situation, he said, fear not. Only believe. Last example. There are these two blind men. Matthew 20. They're coming to Jesus. And what a question Jesus asks them. He asks them, what do you want me to do for you? Very dangerous question. What if they said we want to go to the moon? <laughs> but he's asking them, what do you want me to do for you? Tell me, what thing do you want? What do you want me to do for you? And they said, Lord, we want to receive our sight. Now, he didn't tell them, well, that's something the Father doesn't want you to have here on earth, but maybe I can give you two new jackets. He didn't say that. You want your sight? According to your faith, receive it. The point is, he's ready to give you what you want. He's not afraid. He just told us, posture yourself like this. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. All these things will be are you with me so far? Two examples, in the, two incidents in the ministry of Jesus and to see how he prayed believing prayer. You remember Jesus fed 5,000 people. So try to picture this in your mind. He's been preaching for three days. Thank God our sermons are only 40 minutes long. He, his sermon was three days. I don't know how many slices it was. <laughs> At the end of three days, he says, you know, these people have been with me a long time. I'm going to send them home, but I want to give them something to eat. Physical, temporal need. You know, he could have said, well, I have fed them spiritually. Let them go home. He could have said that. But he's considering a temporal, physical need of the people. I want to give them something to eat. Not very spiritual. Spiritual job is over. Three days. <laughs> something very natural. And so you know what happens. They bring the five loaves and two fish. And Matthew, Mark, and Luke... Say this, he blessed and he broke. John says, he had given thanks and he distributed. So Jesus blessed or he gave thanks. Now, I'm not a Jewish scholar, but thank God for the internet. So I just Google it. What would be this Jewish prayer? What, would, what are the Jewish prayers that people pray? And, and you'll find, you know, for different things, they pray these prayers. So when they are praying over bread, certain kinds of bread, they say a prayer. Or they, before the fruit or before the juice, they say certain prayers. And if it's neither bread nor fruit nor juice, here they, in this case there was fish, they would say this prayer. So what would he have said? Listen, this is the English version, not the Jewish, not the Hebrew version. He would have said something like this. He would have. I'm not saying he did. I'm just, he may have prayed something like this. To bless. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. That's it. That's the prayer of blessing over bread. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. And if there was something other than bread, juice, or fruit, the prayer would have been like this. Thanksgiving would have been like this. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, Lord our God, King of the universe, through whose word everything comes into being. That's it. So you can imagine, I'm just imagining. Jesus may have just prayed this one sentence. Maybe if you put both together because there's bread and fish, if you put both sentences, two sentence prayer of thanksgiving, of blessing. He blessed. Blessed are you. Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, through whose word everything comes into being. Amen. Peter, how was it? Or in case he didn't pray that prayer, he may have prayed something else. He may have said, Father, thank you that you take these five loaves and two fish and you feed these 5,000 men and all the women and all the children. Thank you, Father. I don't think he would have prayed. I'm just using my imagination. I don't think he would have prayed, Oh, Father, if it be thy will, feed these people otherwise, Lord, we'll send them all home hungry. Amen. I don't think he would have prayed like that. You can disagree with me, but that's, I'm just... The point is, his prayer was believing prayer. The point is, at that moment, that blessing, that giving of thanks was believing prayer. Think about another incident with me, please, in John chapter 11, where Lazarus has been in the tomb four days. And Jesus is coming after four days. He's arriving at Bethany. And there's this great commotion. And Mary and Martha are, are crying. They're saying, Lord, if you'd only come earlier, maybe the outcome would have been different. And, and you know, probably there are many other people crying and all of that. Jesus comes on the scene. And he tells Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection. And yeah, you're the resurrection, Lord. I know he'll rise up on the last day. And he says, if you believe, you'll see the glory of God. Yeah, I believe. I don't, I don't know how they were responding to those statements Jesus was making. Because they are in so much grief. You know, you try to talk faith to somebody who's in grief. It's not easy. Because their pain is so much more real than the unseen, than the thing that you can't see. But how did Jesus pray in front of Lazarus' tomb? John chapter 11, verse 41 onwards. Let's look at it, please. How did Jesus pray? Then they took away the stone, John 11, 41. Are you with me, please? How did Jesus pray? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. How did Jesus pray in front of Lazarus' tomb? Father, I thank you. You have heard me. He came three days late. What do you think he was doing three days? My guess is he must have been praying. I know the Bible doesn't say that, but my guess is in these three days he was praying. And somewhere in that time of prayer, he settled the matter. So that by the time he came in front of Lazarus' tomb, it was already done. Father, I thank you. You have heard me. In other 
words, I don't even need to say this, but Father, I'm saying thank you, you hurt me, and I know you always hear me, but I'm saying this for the sake of the people that they may know that you have sent me. In other words, it's already done. I don't even need to say these words. It's already taken care of in prayer. It's done. And when he stands before the tomb, he's saying, Father, I thank you, you heard me. He's not praying a prayer like, Father, if it be thy will, may Lazarus come forth. Otherwise today, we will send him home to you. That's not what he's praying. He's saying, Father, I thank you, you've heard me. It's already done. That is what Jesus practiced. And that is what he wants you and me to practice. He walked on the earth as the son of God so that you and I as sons and daughters of God can follow in his steps. He must learn to follow Jesus in prayer. So now in order to transfer that kind of praying to you and me, this is what Jesus said. We're going to look at two instances, or the same instance, but recorded in two different places, in Matthew and in Mark. You remember when Jesus cursed the fig tree? And in both these places, he teaches his disciples about faith. He says, have faith in God. And then he teaches them the power of speaking faith. He said, you can say to the mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea. It will move and nothing will be impossible to you. And then in that same passage, he goes on to say, and you can also do this through prayer. And so we're going to look at the prayer part. Remember, it's preceded by the statements, have faith in God. And you can speak to the mountain. But you can also do the same thing through prayer. What do you do? Matthew 21, verse 22. Let's read it, please. What did Jesus say? And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. So he said, this is it. Whatever you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. This is what he taught. Ask, you'll receive. Seek, you will find. Knock, it will be open. Your heavenly father wants to give you good things. Your father knows you have need of these things. You just position yourself to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. These things will be added to you. So when you're praying, how do you pray? All things, whatever you ask in prayer, believing. You will receive. Mark expands this a little bit for us. Mark eleven twenty four. How do you believe? What do you believe? Mark eleven twenty four. Same incident, same teaching, just explaining it to us. Mark eleven twenty four. Let's read it, please. Jesus said, "Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will." Have them. This is believing prayer. Jesus taught it. He practiced it. Now his teaching is an attempt for him to transfer that to you and me. So you and I can practice it. What did he say? Have faith in God. And whatever things you ask. Whatever things. So it may be a job. It may be something. Whatever. Whatever things. You ask, when you pray, believe that you receive. So when you're praying, what do you do? Believe that you receive. So go back to John 11. Three days, Jesus was there. We don't know, but my guess is he was praying. And somewhere in that time when he was praying, when he was praying, he believed that he received. 
So when he came before Lazarus' tomb, that was not, not the time he was going to pray. He just said, Father, thank you. You have heard me. Meaning, when he was praying, it was done. He believed that he received. It was done. Now, why did Jesus wait three days? Why did it take three days? I don't know. But somewhere in that time when he was praying, he believed it was done. He believed that he received. Now sometimes for us, when we are praying, to come to the place of believing that we receive, it may take three weeks, may take three months, may take three years, that's okay. But when you are praying, when you're engaging with God, there has to come a time when you believe that you, that means you're saying, Father, I believe it's done. So when I don't feel it, I don't see it, it's okay, that's why there is faith. The Bible says faith is the evidence of things not seen. It was the conviction of their reality. That's what faith is. So somewhere in when you are praying, it may take you a little bit of time, take you and me a little bit of time to come to that place when we say, Father, I believe it is done. I believe I receive by faith. It's mine. My heavenly Father has given it to me. And when you do that, he said, then you will receive. It will happen. How long will it take? I don't know. But he said you will receive. And you just stand your ground. You stand in that posture of saying, Father, I believe I've received. That is believing prayer. Are you with me so far? And you do this for the things of life. The things that matter to you and me. You take the word of God. You go before him. Say, I believe. I receive. Worship team, please come. I want to just point us to two more scriptures and then we're going to pray. In John 15, verse 7, Jesus said this. He said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you ask what you will and it will be done for you. And that's a dangerous thing because he's giving us a blank check. He's saying, you ask what you will, but the precondition is, you abide in me, my words abide in you. It's putting us in that posture where we are seeking first his kingdom and his righteousness because we cannot be in this place of abiding in him and his words abiding in us without seeking first his kingdom. So you ask what you will, it'll be done for you. We close with this in John 16, 23, 24. Jesus said, in that day, that is after his resurrection and ascension, in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. That means you just go directly to the Father. Ask him in my name. And he said in verse 24, until now you ask nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full, that your joy may be full. He wants your joy to be full. So this is how you and I pray believing prayer. This is how you and I ask and we receive, seek and we find, knock and it will be open. We've got to come to this place of believing prayer. That when we pray, we believe that we receive them and we will have them. What? The things of life. What you eat, drink, wear, all those things. I'm going to ask us to do something this morning which if you don't agree with me it's perfectly fine you don't have to agree with me 
But for those of us who agree, we're going to pray. Arun David and his wife Ashita and two children, Anya and I can't forget his son's name. They were part of our church and uh, Arun used to take care of the welcome lounge when we were meeting in the other hall. He was very faithful, he used to take care of that. So they were part of our congregation and they relocated to the, the U.S. I think it was last year, maybe mistaken, but sometime back or recently, they moved as a family to the U.S. And uh, he was traveling back to India on work this past week. And uh, somewhere last week, I think, I don't know exactly which date, he fell sick, uh, he was in Hyderabad, they put him in the ICU. So we got the news on, I think it was Friday morning. And uh, so his wife and children, they flew, flew in. And I think they reached on Saturday, that yesterday morning they reached. So many of us were praying. But last evening at 11 o'clock, we received news that Arun passed away. Some of the people from our church who are, Arun was part of that life group, they left yesterday. Some of them reached yesterday, some of them reached this morning just to be with the family. And we were praying, we were praying. Now, I don't have all the details. I don't know, you know, what's happening today, all of those details I don't have. But my thinking is simple. My thinking is, Ashita needs a husband. The children need their father. And that's good enough reason for us to pray and say, God, bring Arun back to life. We don't want the story to end like this. Ashita needs a husband. The children need the father. And we can pray if we want to. Father, bring Arun David back to life. You may agree with me, you may disagree with me, it's okay. This is not time for argument. But I want to lead us in a prayer. And if you are willing to pray with me, let's pray. If you don't want to do that, it's okay. I'm not forcing anybody. I'm not forcing anybody. But at least we should pray. At least we should pray. As a church, we have to come into the place where God wants us to be. We shouldn't take these things and say, okay, it just happened. No, I can't take it. This shouldn't happen. I know there is sickness. I know there is disease in the world. I, I'm not denying all of that. I'm not denying these conditions. I, I understand it. But something like this shouldn't happen. And at least we should pray. So I'm going to ask us to stand, please. And if you want to, see, we didn't plan that this Sunday we will talk on believing prayer and all this. No, we didn't do all that. No, we just, we plan our sermon series months in advance. 
So for me also it is very difficult. I'm going to talk on believing prayer in my mind this whole thing is weighing. There's there's a young woman who's lost her husband. There's a there are two young children who've lost their daddy. I mean what is the church going to tell them? God is a good God or God's a bad God? But we are going to pray. Say pastor I I have no faith. It's okay. Just 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 talk to him and say God have mercy. God have compassion. Pastor I have little faith. Okay. Use that little faith that you have. Let I will use the faith that I have. We will use the faith whatever we have in our heart. Let's bring it before God. And say God Ashita needs a husband. The two children need their daddy. And we as a church, we know them. We are asking you will bring him back to life. I don't know how I I can't figure it out, but I can ask. God did not tell me to figure it out. He just said ask. I can ask. I can do that. You can do that. So as I, as we pray Let's bring whatever faith we have before God and say God Ashita needs a husband Those children need their father And this is not good this is not good lord we are asking that arun david must come back to life death has been defeated we plead the blood i want you to lift up your voice however you want to pray please take a moment to pray Father we come to you in the name of Jesus as little children God as your sons and daughters and Lord we take it on ourselves to be foolish enough to ask we are willing to be foolish enough to ask because we can't figure this out but you didn't tell us to figure it out you told us to ask Father we ask because a sheep that needs her husband the two little children need their daddy and so father in the name of Jesus we ask that you will send our own david back to his body send his spirit back into his body in the name of Jesus and god give life to his physical body and raise it up oh god raise him up present him alive to his wife and children god we ask in the mighty name of Jesus send our own back heal his body make it whole give it life and let him stand alive before his wife and children in the name of Jesus we command death be removed from that body leave it death in the name of Jesus leave his body and go away Let the resurrection life of Jesus come into that body. Let him rise in the name of Jesus. Arun David rise in the name of Jesus. Be there for your wife and for your children. Live and declare the works of the Lord.
And Heavenly Father, we thank you that you hear us, that you always hear us in the name of your Son, Jesus. And we thank you, Father, for doing this in your mercy and your goodness. Thank you. I want you to just lift your hands, just pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, pray in the Spirit. Are you just going to sing that song? More than a father. And I want you, as you sing it, just sing this song over that family, declaring that God has heard our prayer, God has answered it. Just declaring this song as a confession of our faith over our own, his wife and his children. God is more than a father and he will do beyond what we've asked. There will be no other way. His word is truth. You're the God who was and is and is to come. Redeemer and the everlasting. Asking you will receive it to me.
I, uh, I forget which year this was, but uh, Anand Matthew and myself, I, I, I don't know if others, anybody else from church was with us, but you know, we were in a place called Navsari in Gujarat. It was a small village. And it was open air, open meeting, maybe about 200 people, village uh, setting. We were preaching about the, the name of Jesus. And the pastor was sitting with us on the stage and there was some commotion at the back. I didn't know, I just continued preaching. The pastor went, something was happening there. After about 10 minutes, maybe 10, 15 minutes, we saw the pastor walking up in front with two people holding a man whose body was like he was walking like this, coming. Anand was sitting here. And then, I don't, I mean, I don't, my details may not be exactly correct, but they brought him up to the stage. They made him sit. And then somebody came and said, this man was just raised from the dead. And then I went and sat next to him. I went and sat, his body was, you know, you could feel, feel it. It is not normal touching a nice warm body. It was not normal. And then we asked the pastor, you know, what happens? Because we didn't know, we were not at the back. And so he explained to us, he said, these people, some of the village people, they had brought this man who was very ill. They brought him at the back. By the time they came here, he died. So he died on the grounds at the back. So the commotion was his sisters. I think he had some sisters with him and they were all crying. So that was the commotion. And uh, maybe, I don't know how, what the time elapsed. But then this pastor, he went down. He said, I was hearing this message on the name of Jesus. So I just used it. I said, and my Hindi may not be very good, so please forgive me. He said, Yeshu ke naam pe ut. So that's all I said. And this man who was dead came back to life. Now, one year later, we sent another team to go back to that same place. And I don't know if any of you went on that mission trip. It was a, our youth who had gone, a youth mission trip. They went back to that place. They went and met this person. He was still alive. They asked him, what happened? And he told, he said, you know, I just don't know. I was, went off and I felt like I was hanging down a cliff and I went off. The next thing, it's alive. So, why did I say that? I was just reminded of that while I was standing there. And I want us to do one thing. And again, I'm not forcing anybody. But we are believers. If we don't do these things, then we will never see anything happen. I want us together. We are going to say, our own David, in the name of Jesus, arise. I know we are here in Bangalore. The family is in Hyderabad and uh, his body is there, right? But we are going to say, Arun David, in the name of Jesus, arise. Again, not forcing you. But Jesus said, in my name, he said, go heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. He said, do it. It's his name. The name of the one who is the resurrection and the life. So we are going to say, you don't have to shout and scream. It's not about the volume of the voice. But it's the faith. The childlike simple faith. Like this pastor, village pastor had. He said, I was hearing about the name of Jesus. So I went and told that man, Yeshu ke naam pe ut. That's what we wanted to do. Arun David, 
in the name of Jesus, arise. Okay? So I'm going to count till three. And when we say three, I want all of us to just speak. If you want to whisper it, you whisper it. It doesn't matter. It's not the volume of your voice. But we say, Arun David, in the name of Jesus, arise. Father God, we come into agreement right now. We stand as people in agreement. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there. Jesus, you are here. You are with Arun. You are with Ashita, the children there. You are there right now. Jesus, you are there. And you said, if you agree on earth and ask for anything, it will be done. God, we in agreement are going to command Arun David to arise. And Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. We thank you that you are the Lord who does it. You said, ask anything in my name, I will do it. We as your sons and daughters, we do this. Let's say together at the count of three. One, two, three. Arun David, in the name of Jesus, arise. Father, we thank you. We thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Father. We honor you, we bless you. We praise you. Let your healing power, your life-giving power flow through his body. Quicken every cell in his body. Raise him up, Lord. Present him to his wife and children. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. And Father, I pray for the people who are present here, people watching online, for anyone here, God, with personal needs, they've come here this morning with their own things, things in their own hearts and their own minds. Father, I just thank you that you know that they have need of these things. And as we position ourselves to seek first your kingdom and do your righteousness, thank you that all these things will be added to us. That you will provide, Lord, jobs and open doors and you will bring every provision to meet the things that people need. That you provide for the healing of the body, the mind, the emotions. Father, that you do these things for your people. Help us to pray like Jesus. Believing prayer. We thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of His Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.